Well, good morning, everybody. Uh, today, Father Brian is away participating in the parish camping trip at Trinidad, Trinidad Lake. So we will be worshiping together using the morning prayer service. Now, despite what some people may say, morning prayer was once the chief Sunday service in most Anglican churches um, on three out of four Sundays, the first Sunday usually being a celebration of Holy Communion. This practice has not continued because the Eucharist has been recognized as, as the principal act of Christian worship on the Lord's Day in most parishes, including ours. You can look that up on page 13 of the Book of Common Prayer if you want to go for details. We were all introduced to morning prayer when COVID forced us to gather together on Zoom. So it's great to have a chance to do that again. In place of the sermon by Father Brian, we will be using guideposts to look at the structure and history of the morning prayer service. The form of morning prayer that we're following today is derived from the first English prayer book of 1549. And I should interject, there, won't, there will not be a test on this, but I think it's fascinating to look at the history of our service. So I just want to give you some information. Archbishop Thomas Cramner, the principal author of the prayer book, reduced the seven services of the monastic daily offices to two, to two services, matins, morning, and vespers, evening. The service was also translated into the vernacular in order to increase the participation and comprehension by laity. In the second prayer book of 1552, the morning service was given its current name of morning prayer. Our current morning prayer is divided into three sections, an introduction, the main body of the office, and then intercessions and, and conclusion. And throughout the service, we'll look at these sections in more detail. But now, let us prepare our hearts and minds for worship. Please stand in body or spirit. The second guide post, introduction. The introduction to morning prayer begins with the opening sentence from scripture that refer to the current season of the church or to the grace of God. The confession of sin, which includes the exaltation, general confession and absolution, was added to the prayer book of 1552 as a mandatory portion of the service. In the 1928 Book of Common Prayer, the confession was made optional, recognizing that there are other responses beyond the penitential to our loving, liberating, and life-giving God. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, 
by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on us. Forgive us all our sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen us in all goodness and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep us in eternal life. Amen. Lord, open our lips. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it is in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Come, let us adore him. Now join me in the Gloria. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to God's people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. The psalm appointed for today is Psalm 89 and can be found on page 6 of your bulletin. We will read it responsively. I have found David, my servant. My hand will hold him fast. No enemy shall deceive him. I will crush his foes before him. My faithfulness and love shall be with him. I shall make his dominion extend. He will say to me, you are my father. I will make him my firstborn. I will keep my love for him forever. I will establish his line forever. If his children forsake my law, if they break my statutes, I will punish their transgressions with a rod. But I will not take my love from him. I will not break my covenant. Once for all, I have sworn. 
by my holiness. His line shall endure forever. It shall stand fast forevermore like the moon. Glory to the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia. Please be seated. Guidepost 3, the main body of the office. The material from the ancient canonical hours begins with the invitatory and Psalter, which we have just recited. The invitatory is a psalm of, or hymn of, I'm sorry, the invitatory is a psalm or a hymn prefaced by a seasonal sentence or antiphon. The recitation of the Psalter, the Psalms of David, was a key feature of the monastic offices. The Word of God, in the form of the lessons, is next and is at the center of morning prayer. The lectionary or rotation of readings for the daily office is designed to balance comprehensiveness with the amount of text that we can grasp during the service. Each lesson is followed by a canticle, which is a hymn of praise or penitence to God. The canticles, which form a response of faith to the readings, include selections that were chanted in the ancient monastic hours all the way through to those introduced in the 1979 Book of Common Prayer. This section of the service ends with our statement of faith in the form of the Apostles' Creed. The main body of the office then concludes with the prayers to express trust in God through congregational prayer. This section includes the Lord's Prayer, the suffrages, which are one-line prayers and responses, and collects for the day. Those apply to the theme of the service and to the ministry and mission of the church. Good morning. Today's first lesson is from 2 Samuel and can be found on page 7 of your bulletin. When the king was settled in his house and the Lord had given him rest from all his enemies around him, the king said to the prophet Nathan, See now, I am living in a house of cedar, but the ark of God stays in a tent. Nathan said to the king, Go, do all that you have in mind, for the Lord is with you. But that same night, the word of the Lord came to Nathan. Go and tell my servant David, thus says the Lord, are you the one to build me a house to live in? I have not lived in a house since the day I brought up the people of Israel from Egypt to this day, but I have been moving about in a tent and a tabernacle. Whenever I have moved about among all the people of Israel, did I ever speak a word with any of the tribal leaders of Israel whom I commanded my, to shepherd my people Israel? saying, Why have you not built me a house of cedar? Now therefore thus you shall say to my servant David, Thus says the Lord of hosts, I took you from the pasture, from following the sheep, to be prince over my people Israel. And I have been with you wherever you went, and have cut off all your enemies from before you. And I will make for you a great name, like the name of the great ones of the earth. And I will appoint a place for my people Israel and will plant them so that they may live in their own place and be disturbed no more. And evildoers shall afflict them no more, as formerly from the time that I appointed judges over my people Israel. And I will give you rest from all your enemies. Moreover, the Lord declares to you that the Lord will make you a house. When your days are fulfilled and you lie down with your ancestors, I will raise up your offspring after you, who shall come forth from your body, and I will establish his kingdom. 
He shall build a house for my name, and I will establish the throne of his kingdom forever. I will be a father to him, and he shall be a son to me. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please join me in the prayer of St. Francis. Lord, make us instruments of your peace. Where there is hatred, let us sow love. Where there is injury, pardon. Where there is discord, union. Where there is doubt, faith. Where there is despair, hope. Where there is darkness, light. Where there is sadness, joy. Grant that we may not so much seek to be consoled as to console, to be understood as to understand, to be loved as to love. For it is in giving that we receive, it is in pardoning that we are pardoned, and it is in dying that we are born to eternal life. Amen. The second reading is from the book of Ephesians and can be found on page eight of your bulletin. Remember that at one time you Gentiles by birth called the uncircumcision by those who are called the circumcision, a physical circumcision made by the flesh, made in the flesh by human hands. Remember that you were at that time without Christ being aliens from the commonwealth of Israel and strangers to the covenants of promise, having no hope and without God in the world. By now, but now in Christ Jesus, you who once were far off have been brought near by the blood of Christ. For he is our peace. In his flesh he has made both groups into one, and has broken down the dividing wall that is the hostility between us. He has abolished the law with its commandments and ordinance that he might create in himself one new humanity in place of the two, thus making peace, and might reconcile both groups to God in one body through the cross thus putting to death that hostility through it. So he came and proclaimed peace to you who were far off and peace to those who were near. For through him, both of us have access to the one spirit of the Father. So then you are no longer strangers and aliens, but you are citizens with the saints and also members of the household of God built upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets, with Christ Jesus himself as the cornerstone. In him the whole structure is joined together and grows into a holy temple in the Lord, in whom you also are built together spiritually and in dwelling and into a dwelling place for God. The word of the Lord. Please join me in Canticle 9, the first song of Isaiah. Isaiah. Surely it is God who saves me. I will trust in him and not be afraid. For the Lord is my stronghold and my sure defense, and he will be my savior. Therefore you shall draw water with rejoicing, 
from the springs of salvation. And on that day you shall say, Give thanks to the Lord and call upon his name. Make his deeds known among the peoples. See that they remember his name is exalted. Sing the praises of the Lord, for he has done great things, and this is known in all the world. Cry aloud, inhabitants of Zion, ring out your joy. For the Great One in the midst of you is the Holy One of Israel. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. A reading from the Gospel of Mark. The apostles gathered around Jesus and told him all that they had done and taught. He said to them, Come away to a deserted place all by yourselves and rest a while. For many were coming and going, and they had no leisure even to eat. And they went away in a boat to a deserted place by themselves. Now many saw them going and recognized them, And they hurried there on foot from all the towns and arrived ahead of him. As he went ashore, he saw a great crowd, and he had compassion for them because they were like sheep without a shepherd. And he began to teach them many things. When they had crossed over, they came to a land at Gennesaret and moored the boat. When they got out of the boat, people at once recognized him and rushed about the whole region and began to bring the sick on mats to wherever they heard he was. And wherever he went, into villages or cities or farms, they laid the sick in the marketplaces and begged him that they might touch even the fringe of his cloak. And all who touched it were healed. The word of the Lord. Please, please stand as you are able and let us write, recite together the historical statement of our faith in the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit, born of Virgin Mary. Set was buried. He ascended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. The Holy Spirit, the Church, the union of saints, forgiveness of sins, resurrection of the body, the life everlasting. Amen. Now, I'm not qualified to pronounce the peace, but I'm not going to deprive you of the joy of giving peace to each other. So may the peace of the Lord be with you. Peace. I never get to say peace. (laughs) You're always in the back.
Well, good morning again. Great to see everyone. Um, I'd like to give a special thanks for all of you who volunteered to read. Some of you who volunteered and I didn't have enough slots, so special thanks to you. But um, it's great to have so many people participating in the service. Um, the, we, we are still waiting on our air conditioning unit. Um, the, the tentative date is this coming week. Um, but at least it's a lot more bearable when it's 50 degrees outside instead of 90. So I hope that will stay, stay the same. One unfortunate result of the, uh, the air conditioning unit not being here is we've had to postpone the, the blood drive because uh, we have to have a certain temperature maintained for that process to work. Um, I will just say if, if uh, you were planning on participating, um, I, I know Vitalant, the other uh, blood donation unit in, in, in this area are desperate for uh, type O donations. Um, if, so if you know you are type O and are able to donate, please contact Vitalant uh, so we, we, we can meet that need. Just in terms of uh, life of the parish, some of the things that are happening. Um, tonight there's a special musical recital of some of the youth in our community who are doing the works of Shostakovich, which should be tremendous. Um, in between services we are doing a summer education series on the way of love, which if you haven't seen it, it's a series of videos that the Episcopal Church put, put out, which are a great kind of uh, li living uh, examples of how to participate in our faith. And then I would like to just point out for coming up in a couple of weeks, the um, Christ, Christ Church will be joining other affirming churches in the area to run a booth for the Pride Fest celebration in, that's in Parker this year. Um, if you have an interest in, in participating in that, please take a look at the announcement on how to, how to, how to join that. And then it's hard to believe, but... Uh, our, our, our granddaughter's been staying with us this week and she's back in school in two weeks. Um, so we're going to be doing the blessing of the pack, backpacks on August the 11th. So just keep an eye on, on that. Now we are going to do uh, an offertory as part of, as part of this service. All things come with thee, O Lord. We now continue with the prayers. Please stand or kneel or sit as you are comfortable. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Let us say together the prayer our Lord has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive us 
trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Suffrages be. Save your people, Lord, and bless your inheritance. Come and uphold them now and always. Day by day we bless you. Lord, keep us from more sin today. Lord, show us your love and mercy. In you, Lord, is our hope. The Collect of the Day. Almighty God, the fountain of all wisdom, you know our necessities before we ask and our ignorance in asking. Have compassion on our weakness and mercifully give us those things which for our unworthiness we dare not and for our blindness we cannot ask. Through, through the worthiness of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. A collect for the renewal of life. O oh God, the King Eternal, whose light divides the day from the night and turns the shadow of death into the morning, drive far from us all wrong desires, incline our hearts to keep your law, and guide our feet into the way of peace, that, having done your will with cheerfulness during the day, we may, when night comes, rejoice to give you thanks. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. A collect for guidance. Heavenly Father, in you we live and move and have our being. We humbly pray you so to guide and govern us by your Holy Spirit, that in all the cares and occupations of our life, we may not forget you, but may remember that we are ever walking in your sight, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. A prayer for mission. Almighty and everlasting God, by whose spirit the whole body of your faithful people is governed and sanctified, receive our supplications and prayers, which we offer before you for all members of your holy church, that in their vocation and ministry, they may truly and devoutly serve you. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, amen. Please be seated. Guidepost four, intercessions and conclusion. Until 1662, morning prayer ended here after the collects. In the 1662 prayer book, a collection of intercessions were added, including those for the king and royal family, clergy and people, and the prayer of St. Chrysostom. I have a suspicion that the intercession for the royal family went down like a lead balloon in the American colonies. Just in the first American prayer book of 1749, or 1789, a prayer for the president and intercessions for the state, church, and people were added. In the 1928 and 1979 books of common prayer, more flexibility was introduced to address the concern of the day. Our current prayer book allows that, quote, authorized intercessions and thanksgivings may follow. As this is a Sunday service, we have included the prayers of the people in the intercessions. The service ends with the great thanksgiving or the prayer of St. Christophsom and a call to bless the Lord. Just in case you were wondering, St. John Chrysostom was Archbishop of Constantinople in the fourth century. He was famous for his, his preaching. He is the patron saint of public speaking. Obviously, he deserted me. And he remains a strong presence in the Eastern Orthodox tradition. The inclusion of the prayer of St. Chrysostom in the daily offices is the reason that many in the Anglican tradition remember his name. 
This ancient prayer draws together two sayings of, the, of, of Jesus, one from, from Matthew 18, where two or three are gathered, and the other from 14 John. If you ask, ask me anything in my name, I will do it. At the end of the service, the prayer offers an assurance that God will answer our prayers as may be best for us. To offer God our common supplications is described as a gift of grace. Liturgy and worship are not our efforts, but the power of God in us. As C.S. Lewis reminds us, we pray not to change God, but to pray to change ourselves. The prayers and intercessions. Prayers of the people, form three. The prayers of the people can be found on page 13 of your bulletin or on page 387 of the Book of Common Prayer. Father, Mother, Creator of all, we pray for your holy Catholic Church. Grant that every member of the Church may truly and humbly serve you. We pray for Bishop Kim, for all bishops, priests, deacons, and lay ministers. We pray for all who govern and hold authority in the nations of the world. Give us grace to do your will in all that we undertake. Have compassion on those who suffer from any grief or trouble. We pray for peace in all places of violence. Give to the departed eternal rest. Today we lift up Pat Selwood and those we know and love but see no longer. We praise you for your saints who have entered into joy. Let us pray for our own needs and those of others. We invite you to add your own prayers and petitions at this time, silently or out loud. Today, Lord, we pray for all those in our parish family who are sick, those who care for them, and those who are in need of God's strength and guidance. Janine, Mark, Paulette, Bev, Vicki, Christine, Lane, Doug, Kathy, Andrea, Natalie and Zoe, Marge, Megan, Nancy, Rakin, Tom, Linda, Susan, Bill, Kit, Richard, Sheila, Rick, Libby, Mick, Kirk, Maureen, Rod, Freddie, Jen, Judy and Emily, our military families, law enforcement and first responders, our homebound parishioners, those in nursing facilities, all who are sick and those who care for them. And today, let us pray for our country. We pray for justice, we pray for peace, we pray for understanding, and we pray for an end of the racism, hatred, violence, and political division 
that continues to infect and divide our country. We celebrate with those who have birthdays this week. Andy Bauman, Carla Bauman, Jackson St. John, Denise Johnston, Father Brian Winter, Crystal Buckley, Sharon Dwinnell, Mary Lou Wilson. As well as those who have anniversaries, Lance and Pam Peterson, Frank and Barbara Costi, Charlie and Laura Garcia. Today's altar flowers are given in celebration of Maureen Wysocki's 99th birthday from her church family. And we invite you to add your own thanksgivings at this time, silently or out loud. Please join me in saying the general thanksgiving. Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we, your unworthy servants, give you heart thanks for all your goodness and love and kindness to us, for all you have made. We bless you for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life but above all, for your immeasurable love in the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ, for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. And when we pray, give us such an awareness of your mercies that with truly thankful hearts we may show forth your praise, not only with our lips, but in our lives by giving up ourselves to your service and by walking before you in holiness and righteousness all our day. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory. Amen. Almighty God, you have given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplication to you. And you have promised through your well-beloved Son that when two or three are gathered together in his name, you will be in the midst of them. Fulfill now, O Lord, our desires and petitions as may be best for us, granting us in this world knowledge of your truth and in the age to come, life everlasting. Amen. Morning prayer is daily office. As we conclude the use, our use of morning prayer as our form of corporate worship, I would like to highlight the morning prayer found on page 75 of the Book of Common Prayer or the simpler daily devotions found on page 136 are available as daily office for family or personal worship. If, like me, you appreciate the comfort and support of ritual, the structures of morning prayer we reviewed during this service provides a helpful, helpful framework for personal worship. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all forevermore. Amen. Amen.